Hi. In the last video, we covered synapses, neurotransmitters, and receptors. In this video, we're going to cover how synapses can adjust their strength or weight. So in general, we train artificial neural networks by adjusting their connection weights according to a learning rule. But what is the equivalent in biology? Well, as early as 1949, Donald Hebb proposed a relatively simple learning rule. When an axon of a cell A is near enough to excite a cell B and repeatedly or persistently takes part in firing it, some growth process or metabolic change takes place in one or both cells such that A's efficiency as one of the cells firing B is increased. At the time, this was just a theory, but experimental evidence confirmed it around 20 years later. This learning rule is often summarized as cells that fire together wire together, and conversely, cells that fire out of sync lose their link. Though this misses the fact that cell A must spike first to contribute to B's firing, and so the relative timing matters. Just to expand on that a bit, let's consider a pair of neurons. Panel A shows if the presynaptic neuron spikes tend to occur before or after the postsynaptic neuron and so if their relationship is causal or acausal. Panel B shows how this synapse's strength on the y-axis will be adjusted depending on the difference in spike timing between the two neurons. If the relationship is causal, so pre precedes post, the strength will be increased or potentiated, shown in green. While if it's acausal, in other words, pre tends to follow post, the strength will be decreased, shown in red. This is known as spike timing dependent plasticity, and it tends to induce long term changes in synaptic strength via processes known as long term potentiation, LTP, and long term depression, LTD. So, what changes at the synapse that cause this change in weight? Well, if we think about the structure of the synapse, then we can see that there are many possibilities for changing the connection strength, like increasing the number of synaptic vesicles or the density of neurotransmitters within, increasing the number of postsynaptic receptors, increasing the surface area of the synapse, or even adding an additional synapse between the two neurons. But these are all long-term changes, and synaptic weights can also change on much quicker timescales, on the order of hundreds to thousands of milliseconds. This is known as short-term plasticity, and it describes how synaptic strength changes dynamically with the level of presynaptic activity. Broadly, short-term facilitation is caused by the high levels of calcium at the axon terminal after spiking, which increase the probability of neurotransmitter release. Short-term depression is caused by the lower levels of neurotransmitters available at the synapse. And in extreme cases, it's possible that the synapse will fail to send signals at all. So short-term plasticity shows how a neuron's recent activity, and so the state of its synapses, influence its weight dynamically. Going back a step, the fact that synapses will sometimes fail to send a signal may remind some of you of dropout in machine learning, though here it's individual connections which are failing, not the entire unit. And actually, Jan Le Kuhn and colleagues explored the difference between these two cases in a 2013 paper. Just to be explicit, with dropout, you randomly silence units during training, which reduces overfitting. With drop connect, you randomly silence weights. Just to give you a quick comparison between the two, the graph shows the test error on MNIST as a function of the network size. With no drop in black, the error increases with size as the networks increasingly overfit the data. With dropout in red, the error decreases with size. With drop connect in blue, the error is lower and more stable. If you're interested, the paper provides more empirical and theoretical results, which suggests that drop connect may be advantageous compared to drop out. OK, that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss how neurons synapse together to form networks.